What's up guys, welcome back to channel. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, um, we're gonna be talking about why I made a huge financial loss and how you guys can avoid this. So, you guys know the whole situation with the i3. We're gonna get into that into a little bit, but in the meantime, uh, because we're still waiting on getting the check, I don't know how much I lost exactly because I'm still waiting to get the check. We're gonna get the check later today, which is how much I sold the car for after fees um, and all that stuff, Copar fees, broker fees, all that good stuff. So, as soon as we get that check later today, I'm gonna talk about how much exactly did I lose. But in the meantime, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I have a Nissan Titan. <laughs> A vehicle I don't actually make much videos on, um, and there's good reason for that. This is a BMW's channel. Uh, if, if it's not going to be a BMW, it has to be at least a performance car, um, and the Nissan Titan is neither one of those. It is a tow rig. It is an absolute beaut. I absolutely love my truck. I sent out the cluster you guys saw the other day to get that fixed up. As soon as that cluster gets back, I'm going to throw that back in the truck. Hopefully, honestly, um, test the waters. I'm probably going to put it up for sale, uh, not because I want to, but mainly because it wouldn't hurt to get something a little bit more reliable. <coughs> you guys obviously know I have a problem buying and selling cars. I love always trying something new. Like every couple months, I gotta put my shoes in something new. That's just who I am and that's actually why I love doing YouTube because it actually gives me the opportunity to always try something new. The Nissan Titan, I've owned it for quite a bit now and I absolutely love that truck. Honestly, we might even just keep that truck as a dedicated tow truck. The Nissan Titan has done great so far. We've done so many tows. I think we've done at least 10 tows so far with it we modified it we made it look really good but end of the day it is a v8 at this current economy and uh yeah it's just an older truck i mean the cat went out the other day so we had to gut the cat we did do a lot of maintenance on it, so it has a new oil pan um a new uh transmission pan like in terms of like condition right now Everything has been restored. I actually did everything recently with the intention of keeping it And there's a good reason to why I want to sell this truck for those of you guys who don't know much about credit um, I think it's really important in a young age to build as much credit as possible And that's actually how I actually got this home I actually got approved for more than half of the value of this home But unfortunately to get the proof for the rest of it I need to have more credit score more credit history So it's better to start as young as possible honestly building your credit shout out to my dad Obviously for helping me co-sign this place. I would have honestly got this without him. It's a huge special shout out to him for helping me co-sign this honestly like i love putting my money into a mortgage yeah there's interest there's other factors but i love putting my money my monthly um income onto a mortgage rather than rent because instead of the entire check going pretty much in the garbage for living expenses at least some of it goes towards the actual principal of the home and then as the home appreciates i'm pretty much getting most of my money back if not i'm almost living rent like rent free so if you, so kind of if you think about it it's kind of like a, a piggy bank but you're also getting to live in the piggy bank because you're putting money in it and then you're sleeping on it if you know what i mean obviously if the home values go down anytime soon i am screwed and everything i just said right now did not work as anticipated <laughs> Anyways. Now also in terms of cars, my first car that I ever got a loan on was a very high interest rate. So I think I got approved for 14% interest and that's the reason why I had to pay it off the first year because 14% is really high. And interest as a whole, I'm strongly against it. But at the same time, there is no other way to build credit without paying a little bit of interest. My goal ultimately is to one day own a couple supercars. I love supercars. I always wanted to start my own exotic dealership one day. It'll be an absolute dream. I have a couple performance vehicles in my garage. Now obviously it's E92 M3 is an amazing car. But if you say, hey, would you rather have an E92 M3 or an R8? Guys, it's an R8 all day, every day. Like, no doubt, I am a BMW guy, but the R8 is a beast. So I'm not saying I'm gonna be financing the R8, but it is important at a younger age to finance a car, try to get cheaper cars. I'm not saying go out and get like a Charger, Hellcat, or you know, something crazy like an M3 for your first car. I'm saying for your first car, start off with something maybe 10,000, 15,000 at a dealership. Make sure you try to get it for a good deal so depreciation is not gonna be as bad. Especially honestly with cars around 10, 15,000, they don't depreciate as fast as cars around $60,000. So it's a safer investment. Put as little down as possible and finance that car. As long as you pay off the car within the first year, you have to at least finance it for a year. It can be up to five years, but at least a year. If you finance it for at least a year, then pay off the car, you're building credit it that way and it leads me back to why I'm selling the truck I don't have any cars I'm currently financing right now and it kind of hurts me because I feel like I'm kind of in a hold on my credit I consistently always want to build my credit and the best thing to do honestly is to finance another vehicle so I was thinking about financing uh, maybe an M2 but end of the day I'm probably gonna end up selling the M2 so I was like thinking what car can I get that's long-term and it can also be an investment 
um, a tax write-off and then also get a building credit. And I was like, it's probably gonna have to be a truck. So having a paid off truck is probably not the best way to go about building credit. Having a finance truck and taking the, uh, the interest and the depreciation as a tax write-off is the best way to go about it. And why do I wanna build my credit so badly? It's mainly because, honestly, I, I should have got somebody to sponsor this video for you know credit card companies or something, but I wanna build my credit so one day, if I want to go down to Lamborghini, for example, and I wanna put 10,000 down on an Aventador one day or something, actually, I, doubt that's, I think that's too little, but I mean like, you know, like 10, 10 to 20% down on an Aventador, I will get a super low interest rate, maybe like 1.99 or 2% or 3%, something really low. If you start off your first finance with a super card, you get like 14% interest, or if you can even get approved, honestly, but if you do get approved with like a significant down, you're gonna have a high interest rate, and if you have a high interest rate on a car that costs over $100,000, you guys are dumping so much money on interest. So if you build at a younger age, so when you get older and you get that exotic car, you can put little down, you can get super low interest rates, and uh, it's just a win-win. So that's the goal, that's the dream for myself, and I wanna be able to get a few exotic cars, putting as least money down as possible, so that is the goal of building my credit. So that leads me to the next thing. We are heading down to the Toyota dealership, probably Ford and uh, probably Nissan. I do wanna see the newer Nissan Titans, but I think I'm leaning more towards the Tundras because they just facelifted it for under $40,000. I think that's a great deal, especially if we can get about 15 for ours. Put 15 down, that, that makes it basically 25,000 finance. Payments should be around three to 400 bucks, I think. So I think it's a pretty good deal. So without further ado, let's head down to the Elk Grove Auto Mall and just see what kind of trucks are up for sale and see if they're up pricing it nowadays because you know everyone's like literally marking up. So hopefully we can negotiate down. Or I'm not gonna probably negotiate, I just wanna look. I just wanna look if you guys know what I mean. Nor, you are talking way too much, but at the same time I figured you guys are watching my videos, I might as well give out useful information like this, just like I did at the last video with Copart. All right guys, let's just head down to the Auto Mall. All right guys, so I just got out of Toyota, and first off, the people here are so rude. I don't even know, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on, but anyways, uh, we're gonna be heading over to Nissan. I mean, maybe I'll have better luck there. The thing is, the 2022 Tundra is like any other brand new car. The price is good, but uh, good luck finding it, because people actually order these cars like months in advance. That is the brand new Tundra right there. That's, your, that's a TRD 4x4, so that's pretty sick, but it's a double cab, or I think a double-double, whatever it's called. You know, like the In-N-Out double-double burger. Those, basically the rear doors are like half the size of the front doors. Uh, they are four full doors, but I'm just not a huge fan of the way that looks. I like, I like a four-door truck. I think it looks really sick. Um, at the same time, it's just convenient when you guys have people over, you're picking up people from the airport or anything. Um, so we're gonna go check out Nissan, uh, they check out their new Titans, uh, mainly because the Titans, I believe, started in 2017, the, and then I'm sure they have a couple right now. So let's check those out, check out the prices, and see if those are maybe the replacement of our old Nissan Titan. One day, guys, we're pulling up to Audi and getting our Audi R8, either from the dealership or from Copart, you never know. If we get a good deal on Copart, We'll just get from Copart. Bunch of trucks. So we are definitely came to the right place here. Hopefully one of these are decently priced. You know, the thing is with the options, I'm not, I don't really care if it's got a bunch of options. As long as it's fairly priced, I'm okay with that. This is a 2019. Dang, these, this blue one looks good. Even that gray one looks good. I like the ones that are lifted. Trucks have to be lifted. Cars need to be slammed. <laughs> that's, that's all it needs to be. They can't be just medium. We just got done with Nissan. I just checked out the, the pretty much the Nissan Titan uh, Pro 4 X's, Platinums, all that good stuff. They all look great, but the thing is, every time you look at a base model, then you look at like the model up and the model up, and then you go from like, it was originally a $40,000 truck was like the budget of my head if I sell mine for 15, you know, we're looking at like 25,000, which is not bad, you know, for a brand new 2022 truck. But then you start looking at the Pro 4 X, the XD models, the Platinums, I don't know there's that many options. And then the money just keeps adding up. Now we're looking at a $65,000 truck, which I don't know if I can justify, honestly, because knowing myself, uh, 
I just I just don't want to do that kind of payments you know it's a truck it's the only job it's really supposed to do is honestly just get your work done that's what a truck is meant for um, obviously if you had a luxurious truck that's nice but you'd be less likely to throw things in the car or in the trunk if it's a very nice truck you know what I mean so anyways we're gonna be heading down to Ford I might as well check out the new F-150s I don't know if they facelifted it at all but I mean might as well compare prices see the Raptor possibly because the Raptor is always a sick truck I mean that that I mean it, with the Pro 4Xs and the Platinums we're, we're looking at like 68 70,000 at Nissan so I mean if the Raptor is around that price that might be justifiable but at the same time I don't think I'm gonna be dropping that much on a truck. I think 40K is the maximum budget. If you guys know a lot about trucks and you guys know what is the best truck for towing, for the money, I want something newer from a dealership so I have a five-year warranty. I want that warranty just so if anything happens when I'm towing, blow an engine, blow a transmission or anything, I have that peace of mind and uh, we can just take it back and get it fixed up. Uh, guys, I just got here to Ford and it's raining like crazy so I decided to just stay in the truck for a minute. I mean the, the truck, the car. And I did a little bit of research and it turns out Ford Raptors are $80,000. Since when was a Ford Raptor $80,000? That is crazy money for a truck, especially a truck that's not really exactly meant for towing. Like the truck is an off-roading truck. It's an amazing truck. I love the way it looks. I love the interior. I love everything about it. It's a sporty truck. It's wide. It's girthy. Everything is great. But at the same time, it's not even an F-250. It doesn't tow like 20,000 pounds. It tows like a maximum of 10,000. Any more than that, you're honestly putting too much strain on the truck. And uh, for $80,000, I can get an F-250 King Ranch. So, and, and, and again, I wouldn't even spend $80,000 on a truck right now. That's crazy. So, dang, I didn't think F-150s, because F-150s, the Raptors are F-150s. I didn't think they can get that expensive. That's crazy. To everyone that has a Raptor, I mean, you guys are balling. Finally, guys, we got the green light. Let's head down and get that checked for the i3. I'm so curious how much money we got. I'm, I mean, the difference is a couple hundred dollars, but at this point, guys, every couple hundred counts just because of how much I lost. <laughs> I'm really hoping we get some decent money back. Alright guys, so shout out to my man. I just got the check and it was a little higher than I expected. I expected, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I might as well say the price right now. $8,100 uh, to get my, you know, my take home for the i3 and everything. Uh, my take home ended up being $8,500, um, which is $400 more than expected, which is always a good thing. I'm gonna go ahead and get in more details of how much money I actually got invested into the i3, how much money I lost exactly, but you guys probably get it from the gist of the title. Uh, let me just go ahead and get home and we'll get into all that. I possibly will stop by CarMax to see another Nissan uh, Titan, but this one is an XD Platinum. Um, higher mileage, I prefer higher mileage, but for cheaper. So for example, uh, a low mileage, like maybe like a 10 mile, like brand new um, Nissan Titan is about $68,000 platinum. You can get a same year with about 40,000 miles uh, for like $38,000, like almost half the price just because of like 40,000 miles, which is still basically brand new. So um, yeah, I might, I'm out, I think I'm gonna check that one out uh, just because honestly buying new cars, it just, you lose so much money in the first couple thousand miles. It's like, it's not even worth it. Once you pass 50, um, it's it, it pretty much holds its value really well. So uh, yeah. This is actually the next morning and we're bidding on our potential new project in about two hours guys I'm very stressful mainly because the damage listed is a gamble. It's a hit or miss and uh, Yeah, your boy really wants this car. So I'm gonna go ahead and send it just hope for me guys fingers crossed This this is gonna be not another financial mistake like the i3 ah! All right guys wish me luck on that aspect, but in terms of the i3 so you guys heard I took home about 8450 is what I took home end of the day with the i3 now I did get to keep um, the, uh, the the i3 s front bumper the i3 s fog lights um, because I bought those and that was that was part of my cost and expense of the vehicle I also kept the fan which is probably worth like 300 bucks as well um, and I got to keep a uh, good tire so uh, it's all set in stone I think about, maybe I kept about eight hundred dollars in parts we can also kind of factor that in if, if we really wanted to but eight eight thousand four hundred fifty is what I got out of the i3 and uh, the total the total which I'm kind of embarrassed to say 
is that I'm in, I was in the car $14,500. The reason why I took such a huge loss is because no one's really bidding on i3s. Like literally nobody is bidding on i3s. Like I saw 2019s go for 5,700 bucks. So when mine went for 9K, um, I, you know, I thought, that's pretty much top dollar. Like the reason it went for 11.3, which is the price that I got it for, is because the the way it looked, and I guess the other guy was fooled as well. Not not only me. Um, we both were fooled, and the car looked like it just needed a front bumper and some headlights and a hood. That's it. It didn't look like it needed any framework, but behind the bumper, I guess the damage got pushed in so much, and the bumper just kind of came out. The damage was just so much worse. So I kind of got screwed over there, and that's life. Um, again, that, that's why it's really important, especially with damaged cars, to go look at it in person. Uh, all Copar cars, I'll go look at it in person. It was an insurance car, but it had undercarriage damage. That was not listed. That was not in the photos. Um, that's something I could have actually petitioned if I actually said something when I first saw it, but I decided, you know what, I'm gonna take it home and figure it out. So yeah, guys, that's another tip. If you guys are in Copar and you pick up a car and uh, they, it has undercarriage damage and it was not listed as undercarriage, like really bad undercarriage and it was not listed as undercarriage, um, that's something you guys can petition to send the car back and you don't have to take it uh, but it has to be on site as soon as you take it off site uh, that's it it's your responsibility so that's what happened with me kind of got screwed over there again a lot of learning experiences it's also very important to do research on the car before you buy it I didn't know how to aluminum frame um, so that was my mistake as well so long story short guys I lost about six thousand dollars on this car and uh, you know that's life you know at the end of the day uh, the car is sold I got some of my money back I got to pay off all my debts that I had on that car and I didn't screw over anybody the guy that got the car knew exactly what he was getting because I didn't hide anything and um, yeah I mean at least I got the car driving for him and he's able to probably work on it or dismantle it whatever he wants to do with it the battery alone is worth like 10 G's so congrats to the new owner of the i3 I'm just happy I got to pay off my debts I literally went on my credit card and paid it all off just now so I'm super happy about that um, also had to pay the mortgage and other life bills and expenses but anywho uh, that's not the topic of today's video so hopefully hopefully guys in the next video we have a new build that I can tell you guys exactly what that build is because I'm gonna be bidding on it right now I'm gonna be filming the bidding process and everything uh, so wish me luck guys if you guys are excited to see the new video of the new build potentially potentially if I don't get this bid I, I'm, I'm gonna bid way over market for this car if I don't get it I'm literally gonna grab every single plate in my kitchen and just go throw it in my backyard like you guys will see that because like I'm losing my patience y'all so without further ado guys I love y'all so much Stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.